Salutations Crustaceans, I'm Lobster, and today we're taking a look at a headless multi-scale vase that won't break the bank. But is it worth it? Let's find out. This is the Bryce HXB2-405-3235, is it 3235? It is 3235. Let's just call it the Bryce EHB. <laughs> This is basically the cheapest multi-scale headless base that you can get out there. Brand new, these went for around $550, but they've been sold out for quite some time and have been difficult to get due to the pandemic. However, I managed to snag this thing used for $300 with a hard case. Not bad. There's not a lot of information on this base on the Rondo Music website. It says it features a highly figured bubinga top, but no mention of the body wood. It also says it has a highly contoured body with matching headstock. I don't see a headstock. Maybe it's separate? <laughs> so basically, from the information I can gather, this thing has a some sort of wood body with a bubinga top, a maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. Not exactly sure what kind of wood they're using, but oh well. This features two active soap bar pickups and a three-band preamp with an active passive switch. Since this is a headless base, you have the tuning machines over by the bridge here, and then some string retainers over by the headstock. Now before we get started, let's talk about this base and the issues I encountered. You may have remembered that I did an unbagging or unboxing of this base about two or three months ago, and I wanted to do a review shortly after that. However, I couldn't after I changed the strings because changing the strings resulted in a stripped tuning machine. So I had to source one of those from Rondo Music, which is a painless process, and wait for that to ship, get that, install it, and string this thing up. On top of that, this thing eats G-strings like nobody's business. <laughs> The string retainers over on the headstock area are like little guillotines, so every time I tightened them up, the G-string would break. The string retainers on the Ibanez EHB series give you much more feedback, and you're much less likely to ruin a string. Also, I never encountered any issues with my Ibanez tuning machines. Changing the strings on both of my EHB bases was no problem. So now that I have the tuning machine replaced, let's see how it sounds. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand can turn back to normal. Thanks. So off the bat, I have to say that the neck construction definitely isn't bad. There's no sharp fret ends, and I find navigating the neck easy on this. It feels honestly very similar to that of the EHB. Be it with not roasted maple, just regular maple that's painted. This preamp is rather noisy. I notice that when I turn it off with this little switch here, that buzz goes away. So let's play this passively first, and then we'll check out the preamp. Let's start with the neck pickup. doesn't sound bad. Honestly, I think these soap bars sound a bit generic. Now one thing I also notice is that unlike the Ibanez EHBs, which offer a passive tone control with the treble control when the preamp is in passive mode, this thing has no tone control. So in passive mode, what you get is what you get. Now let's check out the bridge pickup. Thank you. 
Yeah, not bad. Honestly, I think the bridge pickup sounds quite a bit better than the neck pickup. It has some decent nasally funk tones. One thing that I do notice when playing like that is that my finger kind of hits the bridge when I'm playing close to the bridge pickup which doesn't happen on the EHBs. The bridge modules are much less intrusive on the Ibanez versus this. One other thing I did notice about this bass is that the neck is a bit wider around the 12th fret than it is on the Ibanez, or at least it feels it. And it's honestly a bit more uncomfortable for me personally. Now let's check out both pickups together in passive mode. Honestly, I'm not overly impressed with the sound of this thing. Even the Bartolini's on the bass Ibanez 1005 MS sound a lot better than what's on this. I'm also not finding a lot of definition with the B string on this instrument. It sounds very muddy throughout the fretboard. Yeah. Now let's check out this preamp a little bit. There's the noise. Here's the preamp with everything flat and both pickups. Even though the preamp is noisy, with everything flat, it does breathe a little bit of life into these pickups. Let's turn everything up to 50% now and see what it sounds like. Now, here's everything up all the way. Okay, so turning everything up breathes some life into this instrument. Okay, I dig it. <clears throat> now for fun, let's scoop the mids a little bit. Honestly, this doesn't sound bad. The preamp definitely helps. This thing in passive mode sounds dead. Sounds sterile and not great. But with this preamp, it has some decent tones. So what am I gonna rate the Bryce EHB thing? Ugh. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this thing two claws out of five. It's not a bad sounding instrument, but the stock electronics are noisy, and this thing already has a kind of steep price tag for a Bryce at around $550 new. If you really want to experiment with a multi-scale instrument and can snag a Bryce like this for cheap, go for it, they're not that bad. That being said, the body wood is extremely cheap and it's easy to strip the screw holes. 
The hardware is extremely cheap as well and easy to break or strip. And everything about this instrument is cheap. If this were selling for maybe around $350 to $400 new, I'd say this would be a better value. But at $550, I think that there are much better bases that you can get for the money. There's also really no sense in upgrading this given the overall cheap construction. You don't want to build a house on a shoddy foundation. One last thing I want to point out is the engineering, or lack thereof. This is basically a regular base that was then designed to be multi-scale and then designed to be headless. You want to adjust the truss rod? You have to remove the A-string. That's right, the hole to access the truss rod is underneath the strings on this thing. It's not by the body like on the Ibanez, and it's not on the top of the headstock like it was on the Ned Steinberger, which was easy to access. This thing was poorly planned. I'd say you get what you pay for here, but honestly, you're not even getting that. I'd steer clear of this thing. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Bryce HXB2405-3235 boop beep boop bop. And as always, until we groove again.